So we only learned that our lease had been sold when we asked if we needed permission off countryside to build an orangery. At first they told us, yes, £200, we pay by back transfer. Then we received a letter back telling us that we were being refunded the £200 as they have now, now sold the first phase leases on. We went into the showroom to ask the sales representative why we were not offered the lease um, as that she was sold, that it was sold to them. So it's a living nightmare and eventually we applied to buy the lease sold and they were told it would cost £8,400 plus solicitor's fees. Another resident named Jennifer, she said that um, she was dismissed um, when they were asking quite about the lease. They were dismissed saying that they could buy the lease themselves after lived in the property for two years and that would cost between two and £3,000. And it wasn't until the email around 22nd month stage, Countryside finally got back to me. I must have sent around five to six emails. One day I got a response from an Andrew Lovedate who simply advised me that E&J Estates will be in touch as they are set to take over the lease from the two year stage. I was gobsmacked and I asked if I could buy the lease myself given the fact that I live in the property. Another person sent um, a letter from their solicitor um, from Tusco, related to Tusco, who bought the leasehold from Countryside, who said that the required fee has changed since the original time. The landlord has recently been selling freeholds at the site for around £9,000 to £9,500, plus costs of around £750. Uh, another resident, Luke, said, My house has been on the market for six months, now with no offers or any interest shown, due to the lease and the clause and covenants. Uh, attached to it. And finally, um, Sarah uh, wrote to me and said, you know, we feel foolish for falling for this dream that has now become so worrying and stressful. I wanted this to see our ch set our children up when we were gone, and now it's just one big expensive mess. Please help us. We don't any want anything for free. We just want anyone who has a voice to get the developers to buy the leases back and let us get them for a reasonable price. No strings attached and easily done. And that is what we will do as a council. Not like the Liberal Democrats, unfortunately, who abandoned Norris Green residents 10 to 15 years ago. We will be there fighting with them to get the, to, the leases sold back so they can be sold on and dealt with in a reasonable way that they can afford. two different sets of problems to deal with, experienced by two different groups of leaseholders. First, and the real scandal, uh, in terms of financial costs, is the kind of issue that Councillor Christian just mentioned, is where purchasers of normally of uh, houses have been sold, long leasehold interests, uh, and with ground rent of a relatively nominal, or what appears to be small amount at the beginning of the sale, with a covenant in their lease obligations that indicates an increase in that ground rent which appears relatively modest. Some of those people have been actually misled by the vendors, by the house builders, solicitors, and they may well have the opportunity of bringing a claim for compensation, but in many cases they haven't been misled. But what's happened is, is that the developers have unscrupulously relied upon the fact that the way in which compound interest works uh, in over a long period of time increases what looked like very small amounts of money in the first couple of years to very large amounts of money in future years. And then the developers have a business model where they know that that concealed income flow can get them additional cash over and above the sale price of the property because they sell on that right to receive the ground rent in future years. I'd say that is a that is frankly a scandal which has been uh, which has blackened the reputation of, of construction and housing building in this country. People often find themselves unable to sell their properties and effectively trapped in homes where they struggle to pay the ground rent and struggle to find 
new purchaser because of the financial and growing obligations in which they have incurred. It is legal, it shouldn't be. This council should send a clear message to the government that legislative change is needed not just to help future um, house purchases but also those who are trapped in that position. I, I would agree where we can, where we have a limited degree of control in terms of selling land ourselves and where we have house building partners, we should encourage them to uh, not use this method themselves. I don't think we can, I'm a planning lord or a no to know better than I, uh, whether it's possible, but if we can get voluntary agreements from uh, in, in new house builders in the city to ensure they won't adopt this model in the meantime, then I think we ought to say that we would look more favourably and work in partnership with those kind of people. Until the government changes the law, our power and capacity to, to um, uh, compel the change is very limited. And that's why we desperately need the government to act. It's, it's outrageous 
the kind of charges that are levied on some people here. So it is right that we bring issues like this to this chamber. And so I would suggest there are a couple of things that we probably could be getting on with as well as the motion uh, that's there in front of us to support the call that Councillor Moore's made for supporting the Shadow Secretary of State call for a formal missile inquiry from the government. I think we can also look and see what our own trading standards can, can, can help with in terms of the information that we provide for people. I think certainly we can engage a lot better uh, on this issue when developments come forward, notwithstanding some of the bylaws that are, uh, are around that. But also things like dealing with those pension funds, and I will draw to a close, dealing with those pension funds that invest in these leasehold companies. We have a perverse situation where the nationwide uh, pension fund invests in some of these leasehold companies, whilst nationwide itself refuses mortgages for those who, are, who have these leaseholds uh, with onerous grand rent terms. It's, it's, it's utterly crackers. And then finally, I think there's one thing that we can certainly look at, and I hope Cabinet Member for Housing and the Mayor uh, consider this, is how we can bring together other local authorities, certainly around the North West, to see how we can work together on such a campaign. But I, I welcome this coming forward to the Council. <laughs> Briefly, but uh, again, uh, thank you, Councillors Belly and, and, and Connor, for uh, the contribution to tonight. It is an important subject. Uh, support the motion, but, but uh, asking people to reject the amendments. And the reason why I reject the amendments is because it's not other than politics being played. It's been explained to people that this is a national issue. It's an issue that central governments have to change. It's an issue that we have no power or authority over in a technical sense, in a legal sense, in the framework that we have to deal with. That's why it's important that we lobby, it's important that we push for legislation and for change, and that's why it's important that we reject the amendments. But let's be absolutely clear, let's be absolutely clear that we were commoned by people who abused our partnership with them to actually make sure and allow them to rip off people like the people in Sigma, like the Norris Green Estate, and it is absolutely unforgivable. So my pledge to you, Alan Walker, and to you, Councillor Pushner, and to anybody <laughs> else, and to you, the people here, that I will insist and make sure that we have a conversation and a discussion with Countryside and anybody else to make sure that if they want to work with us in the future, they work with the people that they're supposed to represent and make sure that they change what they've done because it's a bond. In my view, it's not acceptable. No, I won't give way. No, I won't give way. No, I won't give way. And as far as I'm concerned, that's the power that we can use. That's what we will do working with our, our, our own legal teams here to make sure that we tell them we will not do business with you again if that's the way you've treated the people of this city. Um, I mean, the only thing that I'm going to say is that the intent of this motion is to shine a light on the Tory government and they have the power to significantly alter this situation. So I'd encourage all members present to support the motion in its original form. Thank you.
So, so this is the amendment moved by Councillor Kemp. Councillor Barrington. Alice Bennett. Ruth Bennett. Barry. Grant. Brennan. Chris Brown. Lawrence Brown. Byrne. Calvert. Alison Clark, Peter Clark, Coleman, Conception, Connor, Corbett, Corrigan, Crofts, Crone, Cummings, Davis, Dean, Didsbury, Dowling, Doyle, Lisa Gore, Roy Gladden, Ros Gladden, Groves, Hansen, Hayden, Hinnigan, Hurley, James, Jones, Juarez, Kelly, Kemp, Kennedy, Kenyon, Key, Knight, Barry Kushner, Joanne Kushner, Lake, Lavelle, Andrew Makinson, Liz Makinson, Marit, McIntyre, McClendon, Melia, Miller, Mitchell, Moore, Monby, Murray, Nicholas, Noakes, Trisha O'Brien, Anne O'Byrne, or Parsons, Prendergast, Prince, Kadir, Radford, Rainey, Rasmussen, Roberts, Robertson Collins, Robinson, Ross, Rothery, Simon, Small, Spurrell, Story, yes. Sullivan, yes. Sun, Thomas, yes. Thompson, yes. Tootle, yes. Alan Walker, yes. Sue Walker, yes. Walton, yes. Wolfson, yes. Wood, yes. Woodhouse. Okay. Okay, 12-4. 
63 against, no abstentions. So that uh, is lost. Councillor Berry, okay, we're going to the, uh, the motion now, but Councillor Radford is going to a request. Would you accept it? No. No. Okay, thank you for that. We go now to the, the vote on the motion. So, all those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you for that. Okay, I so we'll have UK Disability History Month and International Day by Councillor Pam Thomas. Can I invite Councillor Thomas to move the motion, standing in his name, and just shall have a second there.
Non-disabled people's convenience often takes priority over our necessity. I'm very pleased that Mercy Travel has delivered inclusive design in the new train which is currently being shown at Lime Street Station. And it's because of my position, my political position, uh, which is very unusual for a disabled person, that I was able to inform the Transport Committee of the City Region of the necessity to ensure that there's level access between the train and the platform. I was also instrumental in ensuring that new homes um, built through our housing partnership are built to lifetime home standards. But I'm still trying to get developers to do this voluntarily through planning. Despite some practitioners claiming it cannot be done, teamwork has made both these things a reality. They will make a tremendous difference for many current and future disabled people, their families and friends. Neither would have happened if I had not put forward a disabled people's perspective that is often not heard or is ignored. Dada Fest is holding an international festival continuing until the 8th of December. This does not get the same level of publicity or audience as other arts festivals, so I hope everyone is inspired to visit Dada Fest's website and goes along to experience some disability arts. There are exhibitions in our central library, St George's Hall, performances at the Unity Theatre and much more. Dada Fest International overlaps with Disability History Month and the United Nations of Disabled People. Lord Mayor, disabled people are involved in a struggle to survive and yet we have that so much to celebrate. Thank you Lord Mayor.
It takes you to the point really uh, on, on uh, what Councillor Simon said about uh, Dargaard Fest and, and Ruth Boone. Uh, Ruth was at the remembrance service on, on Sunday. She's not well, she has a very serious illness. And I think it would be good on behalf of the whole council if you, Lord Mayor, uh, write to him to express her our, um, if you like, uh, best wishes to her, but also to thank her for the work that she's done for the Alabama Festival of the Year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. No, no.